Sir, the four quarters is a concept used in various systems of the esoteric and the occult. And these four quarters are associated with the classical elements earth, air, fire and water. Now, have you ever wondered why, for instance, north is earth and east is air? Well, today I'm going to look into exactly why the elements are associated the way they are. So let's start right back at the beginning with the Neolithic. Now the Neolithic people were the first farmers. And being farmers, it was very important that they understood the different seasons and when these seasons occurred. Now they noticed one very important thing, that when the sun set, during the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, it always set in the same place. So that was a good start. They always knew when it was midwinter. And so from the midwinter solstice, they could soon find out where the summer solstice was on the longest day of the year. And also, they could calculate then the equinoxes, the days of the year, spring and autumn, where the day and night are at equal length. And so they built these big stone markers that they used to indicate the various times of the year and the winter solstice was marked clearly so they could calculate the time of the year. And they found out that the best time for planting crops was somewhere between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. And so this marked the first season that we now call spring. And so the Neolithic people were the first peoples to associate the movement of the sun with the various seasons of the year. So you're probably thinking, that's the seasons. What's this got to do with the four quarters? and the, the elements associated with those quarters. Well, to understand that, we need to move on a bit in time and come down to the Hellenistic period and the Greeks. Now, I'm sure you're aware, the Greeks were very keen philosophers and they wanted to solve all the world's mysteries. Now there was one guy in particular, a person known as Empedocles. And Empedocles determined that everything in the earth was made up of four basic substances. And that was earth, air, fire and water. And this theory of these four natural elements that made up the entirety of the, of the world was accepted and expanded upon by Plato and Aristotle. Now Aristotle determined that these four elements all had 
or would lead it to certain qualities that he termed the sensible qualities or the four sensible qualities. And these qualities were hot, cold, dry and wet. And he determined that fire was hot and dry. Air is both hot and wet. Water is cold and wet. And earth is cold and dry. And from his work, we come to Hippocrates. And when it came down to Hippocrates, it was the basis for his theory in regards to how the human body worked and his theory on the humours. Yeah. Just like there were four elements that made up everything in the earth, according to Hippocrates, there were four humours that governed the workings of the human body. And he linked these together. But he didn't just link them to his four humours, he also linked them to the seasons of the year. Now, if we move on into the medieval period, we see that they're still using Greek philosophy and humorism as the basis of their science. And along with medicine, the other sciences that they studied at the time were astrology and alchemy and sorcery and divination. And these were the sciences of the day. And right at the core of all these sciences were the four elements, earth, air, fire and water. And when it comes to alchemy, sorcery and divination, then what better source to go to to get all this valuable information? What more powerful source could there be than go to the root of existence itself, that of the four elements. And so the four elements were clearly defined along with their corresponding seasons and accepted by the science of the day. Now, with the elements completely accepted by the science of the day and linked to the seasons by the Greeks, it was easy to see how they became associated with the relevant cardinal directions. As we start to trace around the established wheel of the year, that same wheel that was established right back there in the Neolithic, we can see that we move from the top and of course every map starts with north at the top and we move round the circle through to spring and the east, summer in the south and autumn in the west. And so we have our seasons associated with the cardinal directions. And if we check this with the chart given to us by Hippocrates, we can see that spring was associated with air, summer with fire, autumn with earth, and winter with water. But there's a problem. Autumn, according to Hippocrates, was associated with earth, and winter with water. And it all comes down to a little bit of clarity. 
and the seasons themselves, instead of being associated with hot and dry or wet and cold, they were reorganized so that spring would just be associated with dry, summer would be associated with warm, autumn with wet and winter to cold and so in this case it makes more sense if autumn was wet and water and winter was cold and earth and by the time the rituals come to us through societies like the golden dawn then we see the traditional format with north being associated with earth, east with air, south with fire, and west with water. So I hope that explains to you the current reasoning for the traditional system. Now, that's not the only way that these elements are associated with the cardinal directions, but it is the traditional system that we have today. So, I hope I've cleared up a few things for you. And with that, I'll thank you for watching the video. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And with that, I'll see you again very soon on the next one.